Hey there, what's up YouTube? This is Justin over here at the Den of Nerds, and we are going to be talking some Final Fantasy XIV today. We are going to be talking Stormblood. Now, Stormblood is the new expansion coming out for Final Fantasy XIV this summer, and it's shaping up to be a really, really solid expansion. Us here at the Den are going to be covering it at length. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at it, taking a look at the classes and everything. I did record a samurai video for you guys. I know Josh hasn't put up th that yet. He might be putting it up before this video, might be putting it up after. But you should definitely go ahead and check that out. Gave my thoughts on the samurai. Looks like it's going to be a really interesting class. We'll probably do one on the red mage at some point in the future. But instead, we're going to be looking here at the panel at PAX East. I have some info here from Giuseppe Nelva over at Dual Shockers. We'll leave you guys a link in the description so you can go ahead and check that out. And we can see all the details that producer Naoki Yoshida has shared about the changes to Stormblood that we're getting. I'm gonna go down these bullet points, give my thoughts on each of them. So to start with, Yoshida-san mentioned in jest that he hates Cleric Stance for healers, but if it was removed, people would be mad. So he's going to stay through the battle changes coming through the Stormblood expansion. That said, healers are supposed to heal, so they should focus on that. Now, for the uninitiated or people who just don't play healers too much, Cleric Stance is an ability that swaps your um, healing stat and your damage dealing stat. So it allows clerics to do more damage, and it helps a lot with soloing. A lot of high-level players are really, really good at swapping between Cleric Stance and regular healing stance to help out the DPS and help fights go a little quicker. A uh, lot of people who aren't really as skilled at this can kind of cause some problems in dungeons when they stay in cleric stance too long and they don't get to heal people as effectively as they could and people die. I kind of agree with this move. I don't think that much could be gained from taking away cleric stance, especially since so many people have really grown accustomed to having it. So... Even though they're going through the battle changes and revamping this whole kind of battle system that they got, Cleric Stance should definitely stay. Next point here, the weekly restriction on Alexander Savage and Dun Scathe will be removed. Honestly, this is no surprise. It makes sense. They've always done this when um, new content comes out. They remove the weekly one piece of gear cap every single week to make it so other players can play catch up quickly. So, no surprise there, we're definitely going to be seeing that. Maybe, if we get into the lands of Charlayan in the future, Yoshida joked saying it could come in 6.0 or 7.0, we might get to wear their iconic goggles. Kind of a small point here, um, we already sort of have a goggle item that players can use as a helmet glamour, so having an actual piece of gear doesn't really seem like a big deal to me. Just really small, not really a big deal. Next point, crafters and gatherers will also get adjustments in their skills and actions with the level cap increase coming in Stormblood. There won't be new gatherer or crafter classes in the expansion. Now I actually don't really do much crafting in this game at all, but I have a lot of crafter friends and they seem very very excited that they're going to be getting some changes, perhaps making it easier to craft, because crafting is something you actually have to be, you know, very active in if you want to get a high quality item. You can't just sit there like in World of Warcraft and just wait for your item to finish. You actually have to actively use skills to try and make the item better. Same goes for gathering. So I feel like crafters will be very, very happy with some sort of changes. Next thing is for black mages. Enochian is going to be changed to become persistent. This is not final yet, and there will be more information coming in the future. The team intends to explain the changes to the battle system and classes before the expansion is released. Now, Enochian is an interesting skill. It allows you to cast some of your strongest black mage spells, but with the circle it creates on the ground, you have to be immobile. And for a lot of players, it made the class really, really difficult to play, some of them dropping it entirely, because... If you really want to maximize its effectiveness, you kind of have to know how fights are going to go, if a boss is going to have a mechanic that's going to require you to move very, very quickly, and 
a lot of ranged players just doesn't seem like they really, really enjoy popping off an Enochian and then two seconds in they have to move and then that whole skill is wasted and they're doing suboptimal damage. So I'm all for anything that makes the class more enjoyable for people to play and I feel like if players really do have a huge problem with Enochian that these changes will be welcome. In the new city of Kugane, you will be able to climb to very high places, but it's very difficult to get there. Now it seems interesting that he would mention climbing. I know players like to, you know, jump around and break things and things like that. Kind of like in Destiny, they would have certain hidden collectibles and you would have to essentially break the game with your jumping and climbing in order to find them. I wonder if they'll do anything like that in Kugane or maybe have a specific NPC, maybe for a ninja class quest that could be very, very fitting, but I'm sure we'll be seeing some players in some really wacky places in the new city. Next thing is about weddings. Yes, getting married in Final Fantasy XIV is a thing. The team is working on updating the Eternal Bond feature, and it could come in version 4.1 or 4.2. Information on this will come later. I'm not really sure what they could do beyond a cutscene update. I've been to a couple of these in-game events. They're nice. They're neat. Little fun pieces of flavor. You get some neat items if you attend that you can't get otherwise. But maybe we'll be able to have some sort of more themed wedding that players can take part in. Maybe like a Far Eastern wedding or something of the kind. I'm, I'm looking forward to what we could possibly get from this. Next point here is on special MOG station items. The team is working on a Kryle outfit for the MOG station. Kryle's outfit is interesting. Kind of a little weird. It's got these like weird little cat ears. It's a cloak thing, but I'm sure Josh has thrown up a picture of it already. <laughs> uh, if players want it, it seems like a logical thing for them to do, especially since they already can get the outfits of all of the other Scions. So I think we'll get an outfit for Kryle and any other outfits for any future major players that we might get in the story. Next point is about seasonal events. There will be future seasonal events that will involve dungeons. Very, very excited for this one. We've got some seasonal events now in Final Fantasy XIV, and they're really, really good events. A lot of them just take place in cities, have a short little quest thing. You can get some neat items, and if you've been doing them every year since the game has come out, you get to see like light, nice little nods to you having participated in these events before, meet some recurring characters. It's a fun little thing that comes around every once in a while. The only thing that makes me worry about this is that since they will involve dungeons, and you need to be, say, level... I want to say level 15 off the top of my head. It's been so long to even participate in your first dungeon it might gate out some of the newer players from doing the seasonal content. Then again, a lot of these events require you traveling from city to city, which you can't do until around that level anyways. So maybe it won't be such a big deal as long as they keep the dungeons more on the low end, or if they create dungeons completely themed around the seasonal event. That could be a really, really interesting thing to do. Next thing is about one of the most hilarious things I've seen in this expansion, the male bunny outfit. The male bunny outfit is done for Huma Huran, which are humans, and Rogadin. The team has been working on the other races, but since they've been focusing on Stormblood, work is on hold for now. Yoshida-san mentioned he checked out the one for Huron, and it's pretty sexy. Final Fantasy XIV is a really interesting game in its costume design department in the fact that it is equal opportunity fan service. Rather than eliminating fan service from the entire game, uh, Final Fantasy XIV and its developers work very hard to ensure that outfits that look skimpy on female characters are just as skimpy on male characters. So we're not suffering from that problem where, say, in Terra, you get the same piece of armor, and on a man it looks like this, you know, super hulking giant piece of plate armor, and on a woman we get this completely impractical kind of silly chainmail bikini. So... It's good to know that they've met up with demand. I probably won't throw the bunny outfit on my character since I'm that subset of player that really likes to 
you know, throw my character in appropriate armor for their class, but I'm really gonna have a good time seeing some people, giant tanks and the like, running through dungeons and bunny outfits. It's gonna add a nice little bit of brevity to the game. Next thing is about the Orchestrion, the fancy little jukebox we got that allows you to play music from dungeons. Developing a portable Orchestrion pot is a good idea, but it would require a lot of work by the sound team. That said, Yoshida will talk to them about it. So players having a nice little like mini MP3 player that allows you to play your favorite overworld themes and favorite battle themes when you're just adventuring around, definitely support that. Definitely think that would be a really, really good idea and that it should be implemented in the game. It would also give players more impetus to go out and try and find their favorite tracks by completing dungeons and doing quests and things like that. I mean, if I could run around with maybe some music from other games, kind of like what Final Fantasy XV did with their car, I'd be all for it. I really hope there's a lot of things they do with it, and I think there's a lot of potential in this. There isn't a plan currently to add set bonuses to raid gear, but the team might look into it. So, World of Warcraft has these things called set bonuses, and a couple of other MMOs do as well, where the more pieces you collect of a piece of gear, a whole armor set that is, you get extra bonuses from it. So say you get two pieces, and that will give you plus 10 to strength, but you need to get another two pieces to unlock the plus 10 to vitality or health or whatever bonus that you get. So that would give players definitely a lot of drive to run dungeons repeatedly and collect all of the pieces of gear from that dungeon. It wouldn't really be a problem if you think the armor set looks stupid, because you can just throw the armor set that you want players to see over it. I really think it could add a lot to dungeons, other than just farming for specific items and things like that. And I would rather see this um, maybe implemented in some of the expert dungeons that we run every single week. Because as the game stands now, right before Stormblood, there's... Maybe two extra dungeons to run every single week that get you the biggest bonus. And they can kind of get a little repetitive, you know? It's just the same two dungeons. And it's a really big divide, in my opinion, especially considering one of the dungeons, Baelsar's Wall, is just a lot more interesting and a lot more fun to run than Some All Hard. So if they could bring this in for regular dungeons, I think that would be a really interesting thing for them to do and something that would really give players something else to focus on rather than, you know, just grinding to the next set of raid gear and giving players maybe a sort of sideways progression. They can be like, okay, I'm going to focus on my raid gear or I'm going to focus on, you know, getting all of this gear from this dungeon and getting this set bonus from it, which will not be as good as the raid gear, but will be just enough for me to get by. Maybe better than if I had just equipped multiple different kinds of armor from all these different dungeons. Next up, we got something about characters. In Stormblood, characters that did not have much spotlight time in earlier parts of the story will get more screen time. And we've seen that from the previews in the cutscene trailers and all that stuff. We're definitely going to be seeing more of Yugiri, the Aura ninja girl that got kind of a bit of spotlight in the bridge between the base game and Heavensward. And i definitely like to see more of her. As far as other characters we could get to see, I'd like to see more of the Grand Company leaders, since they kind of got phased out of the story as time went on, and we only get to see them and talk to them really briefly, with the exception of Raubon. He's been a very strong, very guiding presence in the game. I'd like to see more of... Merlewib, maybe see more of Kanasena, maybe see them actually doing some sort of fighting alongside of our character. Maybe see them actually traveling places to our character and incorporating them more with the higher ends of the story. Next we have something on raid content. Including more density of super challenging raid content might be difficult unless this team is increased in size. Striking a balance between challenge and accessibility is not easy. 
That said, the team is looking to add content for those who already cleared the raids. More info will come at a later date. This is something I've always had a problem with in MMOs, and I'm really glad the Final Fantasy team is taking steps to address it. Usually we, you will reach a point where there's pretty much nothing to do except grinding the same kind of raid every single week. I know Final Fantasy XIV does include, you know, a couple different things for you to grind, and they'll release story missions every now and then. And then there's the Relic Quest, which is its one huge giant grind, but, you know, other than that, it really does end up boiling down to all of the stuff is just preparing you to run whatever the highest tier of content is at the moment. And if you've beaten it, then really all you can do is run other players through this highest tier of content, maybe try and gear up another class with all that gear, though if you're working on a relic weapon, you are definitely not going to have enough time to work on two relic weapons for once for two different classes, unless that is literally all you do. So I'm really excited to see Square Enix adding extra stuff for those high-level players who have cleared those raids, maybe some extra challenges or something. I'm always a fan of giving players more things to do, and giving players more things to do is how you retain those players and keep getting that money from that monthly subscription, and keep getting that money to add even more content for players both casual and hardcore to enjoy. So I th am excited to see what other info we get on that, I'm really excited to cover it at a later date. And the last point here is about something that's coming sooner rather than later. Square Enix is going to move and upgrade the North American Data Center to a new one equipped with the latest gear to provide the best possible service. The move will happen in the middle of May before the launch of Stormblood. A forum post with an explanation and dates will come soon. So we will probably be getting a much better server that will add a lot more stability to the game. Not that stability has ever really been a problem with Final Fantasy XIV, but any sort of technological upgrade they can do will definitely help. Maybe we'll you know, see fewer of those instances where players can't create a new character on a server unless they wait a certain period of time, and things like that. And if you're going to be launching a huge expansion for a game that's honestly one of the most popular MMOs up there, you want to make sure you're prepared. Do I think this is going to be the point where we see an MMO expansion launch with no problems whatsoever? Probably not. Those are really, really rare things. I know Legion's launch was fairly smooth for the WoW community, and Final Fantasy XIV generally has something that helps in that pre-order players get to play about a week in advance before the rest of the other players and that's a good way to you know stagger logins get people to have some sort of reason to pre-order the game but I really feel like the game is going to pretty much operate the same as it always has which is very very well so that is what I've got for you guys on this current batch of Stormblood info from PAX East uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you excited to see Stormblood come out? What's exciting you the most? The story, the characters, prospects of new dungeons, prospects of new enemies to fight? Are you excited for samurai like me? Are you leaning towards red mage? Do you wish they had added a different class or a different kind of class? Maybe I know a lot of players have been complaining about not getting a healer or a tank this expansion would you have rather gotten one of those uh let us know in the comments be sure to come back to see more of our future coverage on stormblood and final fantasy 14 in general and for more fun filled news and entertainment be sure to subscribe to this channel and follow us on the social medias.